A line has been drawn in the sand. US troops, fully equipped to deal with Iraq's chemical warfare capability, are pouring into Saudi Arabia, ready to meet any threat from across the border. It was 1991. Images of battle lit up living rooms around the world. As the Gulf War became the first major conflict broadcast live. There was a buzz going through the ship that the training that we had done to prepare for us to go up there was now going to be put into action. All the people that served in those conflicts were extremely proud to serve our country and do their duty. Australians Troy O'Keefe and Ian Allwood were just teenagers, new recruits of the Royal Australian Navy. Kuwait is burning. More than 500 oil wells are now on fire. The conditions on land and at sea could be toxic. During the Gulf War, I was a, an upper deck lookout or I manned the 50 cal machine guns. I remember being during the smoke, oil and dust fires at 10 o'clock in the morning, it was being absolute darkness. My eyes were watering. Troy O'Keefe was also on deck, scanning for mines released into the ocean. We were on six hours on, six hours off, six hours on, six hours off. More than 30 years later, the broken sleep he endured at war persists, along with other symptoms. I get rash over my body. I get really bad headaches at times, um, just pounding headaches. I get very nervous. For years, I coughed up um, like a mucus that tasted like smoke, oil and dust. It still, the yucky burning oil taste still comes out of my lungs. The term Gulf War Syndrome was quickly coined to cover a range of symptoms including fatigue, brain fog, muscle pain and gut issues, but uncertainty remained about a cause. Now a group of Australian scientists has made a breakthrough. Excitement, hopefully, will um, echo across the world. The ion channels, or doorways into the cells of study participants with Gulf War illness, are faulty and don't open properly. That means not enough calcium can get in, impairing the function of every cell in the body. Those doorways act as threat receptors. In some veterans, the receptors have been damaged. They've been exposed to, for example, um, burn pits, chemicals, also mandatory vaccinations. And those um, interventions are threats. The published findings build on research into the same cell dysfunction found in people with long COVID and myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome. It's hoped clinical trials into the use of a repurposed medication will improve lives. It's open the option of different treatments. A diagnostic marker in this area for these kind of illnesses would be a substantial breakthrough and good luck to them, but there is definitely a lot of work to go. Australians stood side by side with American fighters in the conflict. While the US has recognised Gulf War illness, authorities here haven't. Veterans hope these new findings will change that. The Department of Veterans Affairs says it's the Independent Repatriation Medical Authority that has responsibility for determining how diseases can be related to military service. We just want recognition so that we can get a treatment path for our people moving forward. It should be recognised. Troy O'Keefe's time as a young sailor is long gone. His life forever changed by his service. A group of scientists has helped explain why. Emma Pollard, ABC News.